Good day, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of this uh, weekend general update. And the trend in the U.S. market continues on uh, with extraordinary strength. Um, I thought it might have uh, peaked out uh, by now, but not so. It's still obviously got some more to the upside. Um, I remain extremely bullish about the medium to longer term. However, uh, the short term, I'm pretty cautious. So let's have a look at uh, what happened last week and where markets sit just at the moment. So the S&P ended up rising 28 points, so another strong week. Uh, just keeps going up and up. The momentum is quite extraordinary. So new all-time highs formed, and we had a rising wedge pattern that had been forming over a period of several months. And I thought that the market would run out of steam at that level and, uh, and correct back. But it's actually broken above that rising wedge, so it's actually rising now at an even faster rate. So it, look, it will end in a um, in a short term correction, and until that happens, um, the risk re reward is not all that uh, attractive. But um, there's certainly some terrific times ahead, and there are some stocks and some sectors in the U.S. that are just screamingly attractive on a medium to longer term view. Now. I pose the question, can the S&P index keep rising? Um, certainly in the longer term, I'm absolutely convinced that it will. Uh, in the short term, it may also continue uh, a little bit higher as well. So just looking at the bigger picture, average price earnings ratios always tend to rise when there are low interest rates. If you look back over the last five, six, seven decades, whenever interest rates are really low, then the average PE ratio of stocks on pretty much any market you want to look at actually goes up. And that is common sense because when interest rates are low, then uh, people are going to come out of fixed interest because the, the um, return from that is so poor and they're going to put their money into riskier assets, um, such as the stock market, which is going to push the price up. So that's exactly what you'd expect to happen. And that we're in the process of that happening now, but it's certainly by no means complete. Now the current level in the US is slightly below the long-term average. It's around about 16 times earnings, and that is a bit below the long-term average. So we're not even up to the high levels yet. And low rates are virtually guaranteed. Now, Janet Yellen is now in the, the chair as, uh, as the Fed chairman, and that'll be for the next five years. Benenke had already said virtually zero interest rates until 2016. She's not going to change that. In fact, she may even extend it, and it could possibly be much longer. I've even seen some estimates from uh, some very uh, well-known people in the bond market that are talking about uh, extremely low interest rates through into 2035. Um, and if that thought ever took hold, then there'd be a massive stampede out of fixed interests into, uh, into stocks. So when you combine the growth in earnings per share, because the U.S., corporate profits are still growing, and you combine that with some further expansion in the PE multiple, then the effect on the US market is quite dramatic. So let's have a look at what that looks like, what that combined impact could do. Now at the moment, Wall Street estimates for growth in earnings or growth in profit per share over the next two years is 28%. Now that might be right, it might not be right, but it's probably not that far away given particularly with the energy revolution, the, the recovery in the housing market, there's a lot of good things happening in, uh, in American um, corporate environment at the moment. Now if you assume also on top of that rise in, uh, in profit, if the PE multiple expanded from 16 to 20, so those two things occurring together and you'd have to say that both of those are extremely probable scenarios then that actually equates to a rise of 60% in the S&P index over the next two years. Now, most people are going to look at that and think I've completely lost it because that just seems unreal. But it's, it's not at all. We've had rises like that in the past, and it's quite conceivable that the S&P index could be pushing towards uh, 3,000 over the next two to three years. That's the sort of environment we're in, and that's why I'm so excited about the possibilities 
uh, particularly in uh, in America, but also that will fuel stock markets around the world. So let's have a look at the S and P index. So you can see there's been a very strong trend there. The uh, the red moving average line is showing no sign of slowing down. The index itself is actually accelerating. It's getting further above the moving average, and you can see it's now broken out of that rising wedge that I thought may have caused a, a bit of a pullback towards maybe the 1600 to 1650 area. So it's broken to the upside, and when that happens, quite often you get um, a real surge. So we could see the US market really kick on for uh, a few more weeks. The reason that I'm cautious is from here, the, the potential reward versus the potential risk of a short-term correction, the, the ratio is just incredibly unattractive. It's just not worth being in the market at the moment in a major way trying to get that last little bit because the risk of the downside is more than the last little bit that you might get. So um, I think for the moment it's best just to sit with probably something like 50-60% exposure at the most, uh, we, we almost certainly will get some sort of correction and then that will set up a much better opportunity. But my long-term, medium to long-term view of the American market and therefore pretty much all global markets is extremely bullish. Now let's have a look at the ASX 200. Um, it ended up rising by uh, just two points on the week. Pretty, uh, pretty lackluster. We saw some downgrades in resource service companies, which is um, really disappointing. It's, it's a bit out of their control, really. The, um, the decisions to cut costs by the mining industry are uh, uh, being made across the board, and there's really not much that uh, these guys can do in the short term. So that has certainly um, impacted significantly on resource service companies again, so we're better off just stepping aside from those until that situation clarifies. And liquidity in the Australian market is still a major issue, um, particularly in the last uh, six weeks or so. Uh, the liquidity has just been terrible in a lot, of, uh, a lot of stocks. So we need a decline to set up some better opportunities uh, here. So let's just have a quick look at the ASX 200. So you can see we had um, we had a good finish to the week, but there was a bit of a plunge on Wednesday, and I think that was a bit related to some things that were going on in China at the time. So net, we, we finished pretty much flat on the week, so nothing to really get too excited about in Australia. Now, turning to commodities, uh, gold also didn't do very much. Uh, it rose just uh, a couple of bucks on the week, um, and... Gold stock indices were, uh, were a little changed as well, so not much happening there in gold. Uh, again, we've just got to wait, we can't make the market do anything. Gold is certainly in a bottoming phase. The next move is, is to the upside. I believe it will be very substantial over the next um, two, three, four years. But uh, until we actually see the sign that it's turning, then it's uh, best to largely stand aside from that sector as well. Now, copper has been trading between 3.20 and 3.30 a pound, and it's slipped down just under that for the first time in a little while. It's largely a US dollar effect. It's largely a currency effect. And also, oil uh, was steady to, to down a, a dollar or so. There's the, uh, the spot chart on copper. So before I finish off, let's just have a look at, uh, at gold. This is gold on the daily chart, so we had uh, overall we've got a downtrend which hasn't been broken yet. Price hasn't been able to get above the 150-day moving average. We've broken out of that downtrending channel, and it's really just uh, bobbing around, not really doing very much. We have a look at the GDX index, the gold miners index. You can see pretty flat on the week, not much movement, and really it's just all part of a big basin pattern. But I would point out that the, um, the gold mining index looks like it's based more than the gold index itself has. So I think it's, it's just starting to show a bit more stability. 
So overall, from a strategy point of view, um, a short-term correction has to be a probability. Um, it may continue on for a few more weeks yet. We could see another 20, 30 points in the in the S&P index. Uh, you know, a final blow off top before we get a, a correction. Um, but the risk reward for short to medium term trading, so I'm talking about anything over the next few weeks or few months, is just not a, not attractive at all until there's a correction. But longer term is more exciting than any period I've ever experienced. I've been in the market nearly three decades and I've never seen a period where the upside was as clear cut and I won't say guaranteed, but not far off guaranteed. And the primary driver of that is low interest rates and maximum stimulus and it's just impossible to see how the Fed will change their position. I don't, I don't believe they can change their position even if they wanted to um, because interest rates would rise and that will kill off the housing market recovery in America and that would be the last thing they would want. So I think this is the most uh, exciting period over the next uh, particularly two, three years but look it could extend for five years or more. So um, very very good period ahead of us. Now as always for anyone that uh, is um, new to the market or has got some experience in the market that uh, is not necessarily getting the results they want, um, we've been getting uh, pretty good results so I'm happy to talk to anyone if, uh, if you would like to contact me for a chat. That's it for this week. Cheers.